All right, Steph, we're going. How you doing, man? Good to meet you. Hey, I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Uh, stoked to talk. Glad we were able to finally connect and make this happen and, uh, and talk a little bit about lucid dreaming because you're the expert, man. Yeah, well, I don't know where to start. I think, hmm, for people who have never heard of lucid dreaming, like you have no idea what it is, it's kind of sometimes this weird abstract thing like a, a weird video game or a sci-fi movie or something. Right. But I really want to break this down and um, kind of explain really simply in practical terms how pretty much anyone can learn how to do it. Okay. Because it really, I think anyone can learn how to do it. It's just that any skill, you know, you either use, you, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. That's what I okay. would say. Um, and I think a lot of people have kind of neglected this over the years, like not been trying to write their dreams down, not focusing on dream recall. And these things are really important for lucid dreaming. Okay. So, so, so it is kind of like a skill that you can develop. It's not just like naturally in somebody or naturally not in somebody. People tend to dream or well, to have like accidental lucid dreams more when they're kind of younger, I find. Oh, okay. um, but it really is quite heavily linked to your dream recall. So if you can remember lots of dreams, usually you find that you naturally have lucid dreams kind of oh. every now and then anyway. Okay. They kind of go hand in hand. But that being said, you can practice it. You can focus on dream recall and then through that be uh, more likely to become lucid. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because, I mean, as far as I can remember, I have never experienced a lucid dream, but I also have, I also barely remember my dreams. It's like, yeah. I swear, I just, I sit there in, in black darkness. It's like I don't remember. I, I don't think I dream very much, but... I must be dreaming, right? I just don't remember it. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe everybody dreams uh, every night. It's just not everybody actually remembers those dreams. Sure. Um, because what happens is I find that if you – there are five sleep cycles during the night, roughly, between, between five and six, uh, and each one is made up of about 90 minutes. It varies from person to person, and it changes as you get older as well. Okay. And what happens is that – Let's say if you have a dream in the first sleep cycle, the, I don't know if I should go into this much depth straight away, but um, what do you think? Well, yeah, I guess, kind of, yeah, should we get, kind of just start with like a, an overview of what lucid dreaming is, like a definition? Yeah, of, yeah. Is that, is that a good place to start? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So lucid dreaming is where you are kind of aware of the fact that you're dreaming while you're still asleep. So you're kind of in the dream, you'll be doing something usually, uh, let's say you're walking down the street and suddenly you look down at your hands and you realize, hold on a second, I'm dreaming right now. And at that point you become lucid because you're aware of the fact that you're dreaming. Wow. Um, this is very different to being in control of the dream. And this is quite, um, a lot of people get these mixed up. They think that if you're lucid, you're in control. Not necessarily. Lucid just means being aware of the fact that you're dreaming. That then makes it more likely that you can decide what to do, control things, manipulate the weather, uh, fly around. But they don't necessarily go hand in hand. Okay. So you have to practice both skills, not only being able to uh, become lucid and recognize that you're dreaming, but also uh, being able to actually control the dream. And that takes a bit more skill. Uh, that takes a bit more practice because you're fighting against all of your kind of subconscious beliefs about how the world should work, gravity, you know, if I, if I jump up in the air, I should fall down. That stops you flying, for example. Yeah. Uh, but we can, we can get onto that later. But yeah, basically, it's just the, the ability to be aware of the fact that you're dreaming while you're still asleep. Okay. Yeah. So maybe thinking about it now, I, maybe I have gotten to like a too lucid dreaming then because I, I feel like I have remember, or there are times when I realize that I'm in a dream, but I've never gotten to the point where I could control it, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people um, are in that boat where they kind of, they might have had the experience a few times, but they're not able to control it fully. Yeah. Uh, or what happens is quite often people become lucid for a few seconds or, you know, just a, a very brief moment of time and then they wake up. Mm. That's quite common as well. So, so lucid dreaming, specific, lucid dreaming specifically is yeah. knowing that you're in a dream. Is there a, a term for when you're able to control it? I don't think I have, I, I haven't heard a dream term 
for when you're able to control the dream. Okay. I think people just refer to it as dream control or dream manipulation. Oh, okay. Um, Sounds cool. But maybe there should be a term for it because they are different states, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you can be in a, a lucid dream, so you're aware of the fact that you're dreaming, but you're so unable to control it that it's actually a nightmare. And there is a term for that, and it's just lucid nightmare, um, mm -hmm. where it's like super vivid. You know you're dreaming, but you still can't escape, and you still can't control it. Yeah. And so, yeah, there, there probably should be a term for, and maybe there is, I just haven't heard of it, uh, a term for where you're lucid and you can contr completely control uh, most of the elements of the dream. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so that makes sense. I think, you know, we all get that. It's, it might be hard to conceptually understand what that means, I guess, being able to control your dream, but can you kind of, I guess now dive into like, what's the point of, of lucid dreaming? Like, are there benefits? Yeah. Are there drawbacks? You know, why should we, why are we talking about this? Yes. Okay. Before I go into that, I just want to say that lucid dream, in my opinion, lucid dreaming should be kind of a side effect of what you do in waking life. And what I mean by that is by meditating, uh, focusing on like self-awareness, just generally being aware of what you're doing and being conscious and present. I think that is the, the main thing you should be, people should be doing. And then lucid dreaming is a side effect that kind of happens as a bonus. Hmm. Um, they go hand in hand. So that being said, that there are some direct benefits of the lucid dreaming aspect of things. Um, so, for example, you can work with your subconscious mind and actually remove fears, um, insecurities, doubts, negative beliefs from your mind um, quite effectively. You know, I mean, it takes time, but you can work with your subconscious directly. Um, you can, for example, go and have a chat with something you fear. Let's say if you're afraid of dogs for whatever reason you can literally go into a lucid dream find a dog and have a direct one-to-one -one conversation with the dog which is really just a part of your subconscious mind and that part of your subconscious mind will then tell you you know it, it will tell you various things it might tell you why you're scared of dogs it might not but you can have that interaction directly you know you can work directly with your own mind as if you were kind of walking around inside your own head, because that's kind of what you're doing. You're walking around inside your own mind. So if there is a deep, hidden insecurity in your mind somewhere, which for most people there is somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're able to actually talk to that aspect of your mind, interact with it, and actually ask it questions. And not always, but sometimes things come up or you get answers that you necessarily might not have got without lucid dreaming. So it can be a really powerful tool. Wow. That's crazy. That, so do you, so you can use that as a tool to like kind of improve yourself. So does that mean that you're going like, for example, for yourself, do you go to bed with like an agenda of like tonight I'm talking to the dog? <laughs> well, not, not every night, not every night, mm -hmm. but yes, when I'm trying to, like, if I'm trying to work on something like we've all been there when we're like, we're trying to think of a solution to a really complex problem and it's just too many variables. You're trying to work it out. Your brain gets overwhelmed if you just go to bed and kind of set the intention to let your subconscious mind figure it out then i find that really helps even if you don't lose a dream like you wake up and you you might have an answer mm. not always but you might do and then if you have a lucid dream then it that's also a way of processing that and you maybe you can like ask dream characters what they think and they they might be different aspects of your subconscious mind and it's, it's such a powerful tool. There's so many things you could do with it. Um, but it's not just, that's not the, the only benefit. You know, that's just the first one I wanted to touch on. Uh, but you, there's all kinds of things you can do. Like, for example, confidence. If you practice things in a lucid dream, let's say you're public speaking, um, um, a physical motion thing like martial arts or whatever it is, dancing, let's say, you will actually improve at those things in waking life. Whoa. Um, so it's kind of a way of hacking your mind and getting extra time that you would have just been asleep, you know, not using mm -hmm. uh, if you weren't lucid dreaming, let's say. Um, and then there's obviously all the more subjective benefits. Like you will have these incredible experiences, wake up with the memories, and then some of that could translate into like real world confidence, creativity, inspiration, ideas. Uh, and in some cases, a complete change in your in your personality and, and your life. 
-hmm. because you're suddenly empowered. Um, and this is a reason that a lot of video gamers, I find, tend to gravitate to lucid dreaming because it's that escapism. But what they find is that when they actually do get lucid and have these crazy experiences, it empowers them and they feel more in control of their life. Not always, but this is, you know, quite common. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's several benefits, you know, it depends what you want to use it for. And then you have on the, on, on the deeper kind of more spiritual level, you can get down to kind of more awareness in your waking life and being more in control of your emotions, your reality, um, not just in the dream, but in waking life as well. Wow. Okay. So I'm, I mean, hearing you talk about this, it sounds like, like it'd be exhausting, like it'd be tiring. Like I just, right now I go to bed and I just, you know, I go to bed, I go to sleep, I'm tired. But yeah. are you, is it that way? Are you putting, you know, mental energy or focus into, you know, lucid dreaming or is it, is it not like that at all? Is it kind of restorative? It depends on kind of the technique you're using. And I don't know if you want me to go into techniques um, later, I can. But if you just go to bed and then sleep, you know, the whole night uninterrupted and happen to have a lucid dream, it won't make you any more tired. Uh, sometimes I feel like subjectively, obviously, I've not studied this. Uh, subjectively, I feel more uh, awake when I wake up after a lucid dream because I'm so excited. I've got this kind of empowered emotions running through me. That being said, there's a technique called um, the wake back to bed technique, WBTB, which is where you target the last sleep cycle of the night, which is when your REM sleep is the longest. Um, and I can get on to explaining like basics of sleep cycles in a minute. But long story short, you interrupt your sleep in order to then go back to sleep and lucid dream. Oh. And by doing that, you cut your sleep um, in half, oh, not in half, but you, you cut your sleep into different chunks. And that makes you more tired the next day. But that's not really linked to the lucid dreaming aspect. That's just because of the technique you use to have a lucid dream. I see. It's just, yeah. it's just related to the method of having to wake yourself up to, yes. to get there. I see. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, aside from kind of the, the benefits of that, of being able to you know, I mean, can do, can you kind of compare it to being able to like talk to your subconscious mind? Is that what it is? You can ask it questions. Yes, yes, exactly. But um, the responses you get are very unpredictable mm. because it's your it's your subconscious mind. So even if you think you're going to get a sensible response, you might actually get a really random response. But then later on, when you interpret that or when you write it down, when you wake up, then it makes sense. But in the moment, it might feel like, what the hell is going on here? I don't know what, why this is happening. But then some other times it is more direct. Other times it is literally just you talk to the dog. The dog says, yeah, you're scared of me because I, a dog chased you when you were six. And mm. you've, it's like an uncertain thing. You're scared of it because you don't understand. It's something like that. It might be really direct. But then it might be also symbolic, like you talk to the dog and then suddenly you're both on a different planet and you have to interpret it later and work out why that happened. I see. Wow, yeah. that, that's exciting to me. That's really cool that, you, that this is kind of like a, a method or a portal into being able to, to, to talk to my, my deeper self and figure <laughs> out that kind of stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, it's amazing. But I want to I want to make it clear though for um, for beginners like people who have never done it, mm -hmm. it is obviously a skill. So sure. as incredible as that sounds, and it really is incredible, you, that does take obviously work to get to that point where you can actually have a lucid dream. Mm. Um, you can't. It's not a case of just saying right tonight I'm going to lucid dream after having never done it in forty years of your life or whatever, uh, and then suddenly you're in a lucid dream. Right. It takes practice, obviously. But when you do it, then then you can do that, you know, enjoy those benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, aside from that, is it uh, is it also just is it fun to do? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I mean, the experiences feel as vivid, if not more uh, than real life. This the sensations, um, 
whatever it is, you know, sex, food, flying around, using superpowers, it all feels exactly like you're doing it. Right. Um, and what actually happens is, um, I believe mirror neurons fire in your brain in the same way that if you, they would if you were really doing it. And this is part of how you're able to improve real life skills by lucid dreaming is because the same kind of circuitry is firing in your brain. So it is like you're doing it to your brain. Uh, it's only when you wake up that you, that you can say, oh, actually, that was a dream. But your brain doesn't really know the difference. That is really cool. So, and, yeah. and you mentioned video games before, like just picturing this, is it kind of like you're in, you know, a Sims game and you're, you're controlling your character and you can do whatever you want, but rather than having to look through, you know, a TV screen, you're like actually in this video game and you get all the experiences. Oh yeah. It's you. It's literally you. Like you look at your hands and it's like, uh, you literally feel confused almost that you're in this other world and you're awake, basically, you're looking at your hands, and yet you know it's not real, you know it's not, uh, it's a dream. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, interestingly, some people actually dream in third person. So they will um, have a lucid dream and be above themselves like a, a video game character, you know, where they see themselves walking around, uh, you know. Wow. But yeah, I, I find most people tend to dream in first person. That's, that's what I do. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah. Man, that alone just sounds like worth doing this. It sounds so fun. Um, okay, so that's cool. I, I get all that now. Should we dive into maybe how to get into this, how to get started? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. So let me think of the best way to put this for, uh, I guess this is for people who've never tried or, or don't really know how to. Yeah, like, I, yeah. you know, we can just use me as an example. Like I've never... I've never tried to do it. Um, okay. I'm really just learning about it. Yeah. How could, how could someone like me get started? Okay. So the first, I would say the foundation is dream recall. So being able to consistently remember dreams every morning, uh, ideally, right? At least between, between one and five dreams every morning, you can wake up and you can just write them down. You remember the detail. Uh, and part of that comes from just trying to do it literally just setting the intention so like every morning instead of checking your phone you actually the fir your first focus is what did i just dream about uh and just literally sit with it for five minutes even if you can't remember anything at the beginning because when you first when people first try and do it they won't be able to remember any of their dreams and they'll kind of get discouraged but if you just say right no matter what happens as soon as i wake up five minutes of my morning first thing i'm going to try and remember my dreams even if you can't remember them at all Anyway, so then you, you go about writing your dreams down. And what you're doing is you're looking for recurring patterns or signs, things you regularly dream about. So maybe it's like a green car, or you're in a certain location or something. And then you can start to try and inject your awareness into those dream scenes. So you can tell yourself, the next time I see a green car, I will realize I'm dreaming. And you kind of set yourself up with this, it's called prospective memory, uh, the ability to remember something in the future. So you'll tell yourself, when I next see a green car, I will remember I'm dreaming and become lucid. And the idea is if that intention is strong enough, you will actually, it will actually happen. And then, um, so that's kind of the foundation, your dream recall, writing dreams down every morning and recognizing the dream signs, like the recurring uh, patterns and whatever it is, people, locations. Mm -hmm. And then... Well, hold, just real quick, Steph, I'm sorry, yeah, just, to, sure. just to, a question. When you're, cause so when you kind of identify those um, like recurring dreams that you have, so you just kind of in your conscious mind, maybe before you bet, go to bed or something, you just are, are sort of telling yourself that if I see that green car, then I should know that it's a, a dream. Is that how it works? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, depending on how much effort you want to put into it, you can also combine that with affirmations throughout the day so you can like let's say five to ten times throughout the day you can read out a list of statements you want to be true like i can lucid dream i will be lucid when i next see the green car i can control my dreams and 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 they can be done also as you're going to sleep as well like just before you need to sleep so you can set your intention mm -hmm. but they should really be done regularly throughout the day okay gotcha <clears throat> that makes sense uh, yeah so so yeah, exactly. So you do those, the affirmations, you set the intention. And then on top of that, you layer on what's called reality checks. 
So a reality check is where you test whether you're dreaming or you're awake. And the idea is that you're going to do this test in your dream and it's going to make you lucid. It's going to trigger the lucid dream. Okay. This sounds like Inception now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, like the totems, right, in Inception. They, yeah. they have a unique item. He knows if he spins the, the spinning top and it keeps spinning, he's dreaming. Or at least it's, it, he's in his dream. Yeah. Kind of similar. But in this case, there's only one person's dream and that's yours. And you're just trying to work out if you're awake or dreaming. Um, so what you do, I'll just get, show you my favorite reality check. And that is to take one hand and then try and push the finger of your other hand through your palm. And as you do this, obviously, it, in waking life, it's always exactly the same strength of resistance. Your finger never goes through unless you're like insanely strong or something. Right. And, um, and you know for a fact that the finger's not going to go through. So, okay, I'm awake. But if you do that in a dream, the finger will actually go through. Um, and then at that point, you'll be able to say, oh, so I must be dreaming then because it would only go through in a dream. Oh, Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Um, so it, that's why it's called a reality test, because the result that you're looking for, so the finger going through the palm, can only happen if you're dreaming. So what you do is throughout the day, you would regularly do these checks. So you would say, you know, you can either set an alarm on your phone to remind you to do it, or you can just do it every time you walk through a certain doorway or whatever it is. You can just say, am I dreaming right now? And you really look around and really ask yourself the question. Don't assume you know the answer. Really, as if you're trying to catch yourself out and test whether you are actually dreaming right now. Even though, of course, you know you're not. But uh -huh. why, how do you know you're not? How do you really know you're not dreaming right now? And you need to test it. So you do the test. You ask yourself, am I dreaming? And you kind of look around and just really be mindful of what you're seeing, like the details. Does everything make sense? Where were you 10 minutes ago? You know, how did you get here? Um, that's a reality check. And I could go into lots of detail on that, but that's the basics of it. And you, mm -hmm. you would do that between five and 10 times a day, ideally more. Um, very quick few bonus tips on that. You want to do it first thing when you wake up, because then you're going to catch all of the false awakenings out. Um, mm. which is where you dream about waking up and then you're snapped back into the bed and you wake up again. Um, you also want to do it every time you experience something strange or unusual. This is really important, actually. Let's say if you're walking through town and you see like a, an alligator mascot or something, something you don't see every day, that would be a perfect time to do a reality check because you're much more likely to dream about unusual things so it's very likely that you would then that night dream about that alligator. And then the next thing directly after that is you did a reality check. So you would probably dream about that too and then become lucid. Oh, okay. I see. So is it, is the idea that doing these reality checks, you know, in, in real life throughout your day where, you know, you, you know that you're in real life, but the idea being that then you're, you're kind of training your mind to then in your dream, do the same thing. So that, once you do the hand thing it, and it goes through, then that's the realization point where you become lucid. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Sounds and you don't like always would... need reality checks. Oh, you don't? Okay. Not always. Uh, sometimes if, you're, if your intention is strong enough, you will just become lucid, uh, I guess you could say mentally, just without needing to test it. But then you should always test it after that just to like kind of back it up. Just I see. make sure. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could um, lose lucidity, you could lose focus, wake mm -hmm. up. Yeah. See, like, it sounds like uh, if you get into this, do you ever get to, like, just like inception, like questioning if you're in reality all the time and you're constantly trying to put your finger through your hand? <laughs> uh, not really. No, okay. because it is a distinct difference between. And it's really hard to explain and describe actually the difference, but there's a distinct difference between being lucid and aware and being awake like we are now. Um, it's a different type of reality, if that makes sense. It's a, it's a different feeling of being conscious mm. in waking life and in a lucid dream. Okay. So I guess you, you could get confused. Yeah. But I find the, the biggest confusion is to do with memory. Not when you're in the moment. In the moment, I know I'm awake now. And, I, and if I was lucid, I would know that that was a dream. 
what can get confusing is if you have lots of lucid dreams, you know, you, you can get to the point where you confuse real life memories with lucid dream memories. Oh, it's yeah. Dream about things that you experience in waking life. Like, let's say if you have a lucid dream about you being at work and having a conversation with your boss, as like a mundane example, that memory is very likely to get confused with a real memory. It can be very hard to tell the difference, especially as time goes past. And it's like uh, something that happened six months ago, a year ago. Um, it can actually be quite confusing. And this is why it's really important to keep a dream journal. Mm. Ideally, a digital one, so you can actually search things. Um, so if you're not sure, you can just go back to the dream journal and, and read what happened. Um, but this mainly happens if you ha firstly have lots of lucid dreams, which you know most beginners won't have that problem. Mm -hmm. um, and then secondly, have lots of lucid dreams about really mundane things or or the same type of locations, like your bedroom, your place of work, your gym, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mainly with conversations. It's mainly with conversations because with with the other stuff, like with flying, you know, exploring alien planets, you're, it's pretty obvious that was a dream, sure. right? But if it's a conversation between somebody you know, that's it's very hard to tell the difference between those memories. You're like, I told you to take out the trash. And you're like, no, you <laughs> dreamed that. You didn't tell me. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Yeah, it can happen. Yeah, you can probably get yourself into some... Uh, some bad situations about that. Oh. Right. <laughs> Thinking so you've had brings, conversations when you haven't. And... Yeah, yeah. But so that brings up another question is is are there any, you know, downsides or, or dangers to doing this? Yeah, well, I mean obviously that um is is quite annoying. Can be fixed with just keeping a good dream journal. Mm -hmm. Uh and then and this one is kind of subjective. I don't have any kind of study. I don't think there's been any studies to back this up. But it's just my kind of common sense is that so like I said, when you practice real life skills, you improve at them in waking life. Meaning there is a very strong connection between your conscious, uh, how can I say, it's the, your, it's the same brain is what I'm saying, right? In a lucid dream and in waking life, it's still your brain, which is obviously still you or part of you. So if you use that to practice things like skills, that's obviously good, right? And that comes back to the waking life. However, if you use a lucid dream to do bad things, violence, um, what, you know, I don't need to explain bad things, but bad things, right? Sure. Then emotionally and, and in, in terms of mental health, that has to have a bad impact on your real brain. I mean, yeah. surely, right? I don't know for sure, but it has to. It has right. to. That it, it's still you. It's still your brain. So the memories of doing those things, even if it's in a lucid dream, will still still be with you. Mm -hmm. okay. So I would say within reason, I mean, obviously you can, you know, give your boss a slap or, you know, throw whatever, yeah. throw things around. But if it's like really dark things, um, I would probably not do those. I would just avoid it because mm -hmm. we just we don't know. Like we don't know what effects that will have on your mental health, on your brain and emotional well-being. Um, yeah. And there's just there's not really any need to do it. There's so many cool things you could do in a lucid dream. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So no, I mean, that's, that's the only that's the two main dangers or or risks I can think of. Yeah, no, that's good to know. And I mean, but that's uh, to be sure that that stuff doesn't happen. That's where you kind of have to get to that extra point where you're able to control your dream a bit. Then, right? Well, yes and no, because half half of the problem I believe would be somebody having so much control that they decide to do bad things. Mm. That's what I was saying. Um, I see. The nightmares is, is kind of fine. I mean, we have nightmares uh, even without being lucid. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the nightmares necessarily would, would be a bad thing because we have them anyway. I think what I think is the problem is if you're using it to have so much control and awareness that you do bad things, I mean, it, it must be surely as bad for your brain and emotional emotional state as doing those things for real because mm -hmm. you're conscious of doing it, you know. But this is subjective. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like people can make intuitive. their own mind up. Yeah, it seems logical yeah, that yeah. that would be that way. But um, yeah. And then you mentioned nightmares too. Would this be helpful for people who have a lot of nightmares to kind of 
yeah. you know, knock themselves out of it or realize that it's not real? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, nightmares, can, especially if they're recurring nightmares, like always the same thing, that can actually be a very easy way to lucid dream. Mm. Because you can just tell yourself, when I next have this nightmare about being chased, I will become lucid and actually becomes a trigger for your lucid dreams. Oh, okay. Like a kind of secret backdoor into the lucid dreams because it happens so often. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then you can just use that to stop the nightmare however you want to. Like some people would um, ask the nightmare what it represents if you're being chased, let's say. Mm-hmm. Or you could just stop it in a more fun way. Like you could use telekinesis to just throw the thing that's chasing you away or imagine like an ice wall just form uh, in front of you or whatever, like crazy. You can just be creative with it, can't you? Yeah, whatever you want. That's fun. Okay, so let's uh, let's jump back a bit. To is there anything? Because um, we were kind of going through the steps of how to get started lucid dreaming, um, and we talked about the reality mm-hmm. uh, check. Is there anything after yeah. that, or or anything we need to continue on? Yeah, well, so you can really decide how how far you go with it. What I would say the the best thing is the intention to lucid dream. So really mm-hmm. tell yourself, I will control, not even control, but I will become aware of my dreams tonight. And then the reality checks as often as you can, especially when you see something strange. And then the dream recall. If I had to focus on one, it will be the dream recall because without that, anything else you do, you you won't be able to use it, basically. Mm -hmm. You need to be remembering your dreams uh, quite consistently. And then on top of that, obviously, uh, the whole thing is based on awareness and, and being present and conscious. So meditation would massively help with that. And so basically, I would say, If you want to set yourself a little routine, um, it will be to write your dreams down in the morning, do reality checks throughout the day, and then meditate. If you have to pick just one time, I would say just before you go to bed, but you should really be meditating as you wake up and also before you go to bed. Uh, Just for five minutes. It doesn't have to be long, just five minutes each time, Um, Mm -hmm. ideally more, but most people can't do that because it's quite hard to focus and sit still. Yeah, totally. Especially if you're not used to it. Right. Okay, cool. Well, that, that's great. I mean, I think we got a good uh, basis of, you know, we covered what lucid dreaming is, what it can kind of be, benefits, how to get started a little bit. Um, is there anything else that uh, maybe we missed that you want to mention? Well, for me, for me personally, it's more of a side effect, like I said, of being conscious in your waking life. So, my, I guess my message would be to first focus on your, your waking life, actually. And, you know, meditation, being positive, deciding what you want in life. And, I mean, I could, I could talk, talk for hours about all of that stuff. But for me, that comes first. And then lucid dreaming is like a side effect of that. So, but that being said, I think lucid dreaming can also be a gateway into the waking life stuff. They can kind of, it can kind of go both ways. So... If this is interesting to people, I would say just just try those things. You know, write your dreams down every morning. Try and identify your dream signs, like the recurring patterns, and do the reality checks as often as you can. Meditate. And hopefully, I mean, I don't know if it varies from person to person, but hopefully they will lucid dream pretty soon. I mean, maybe in a few weeks, if they're lucky. Maybe even in a few days. It depends on from person to person. Sure. Um but I believe anyone can learn if they try. Cool. Um, yeah, and you mentioned meditation. I just, I'm curious just to kind of get your thoughts on it because I, I've i heard so many times of people saying how beneficial meditation is and I've never really tried it, but I've been doing it for about probably two weeks now and just getting into yeah. it. I've done it every day, like 10 minutes. And I mean, I honestly, I don't even really know why I'm doing it. It makes me feel a bit more... Uh, less anxious and calm and, and everything afterwards. Um, but I, I think I'm still, cause that, that's a skill too, isn't it? Where you kind of have to develop that and to, to get good at meditation. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's in today's world, especially with things like, um, you know, social media apps, Instagram, whatever, it's very, our attention spans are a lot worse than they used to be. Mm-hmm. And this get it gets worse every year. I think there's some kind of official, uh, like metric of the average attention span, and it literally goes down every year. Wow. Um, has been in decline for a while, and that's because there's constantly this focus on like the next thing, 
you're scrolling on YouTube, you get the next addictive, like clickbaity video, you know, there's always the next thing. And we're kind of addicted to this thirst for more, for like better knowledge, more interesting things and, and um, more visual stimulus. And, and all of this makes us, our attention spans just get worse and worse. So meditation is a really good way to bring us back to the present moment and to just block out all of that ego, um, ego based kind of brain noise and get back into our bodies and, and in touch with ourselves. It's really powerful, but it, it can be really difficult, you know, especially if someone has never meditated before, it can be really hard even to just for a minute or two to sit there with your eyes closed, not moving and specifically not thinking anything or at least not being, not engaging with those thoughts. Yeah. That's the because, hard thing for me. Yeah, it's it's really common actually. And I struggle all the time with this as well. Even though I've been meditating for years, I always struggle with this. And that is the constant thoughts you have. You know you should be meditating. You know you should be not thinking anything or, you know, thinking as little as possible. And yet constantly you just get these thoughts coming out of nowhere seemingly, like random things. Yeah. That you have no reason to be thinking about. Um and that's just how the brain works, the ego, you know. Mm-hmm. It's always trying to trying to say things right <laughs> always trying to say things there messed me up yeah no i yeah. i uh i can relate with that very much but yeah that's that's kind of a i've just heard so often that you know meditation has been so beneficial for a lot of people so i just wanted to give it a try and and you know see if i'm could get those benefits but yeah definitely my short attention span being distracted by a whole bunch of different crap that's always going on. I, I definitely suffer from that stuff. So yeah, hopefully the meditation along, I'm going to start getting into lucid dreaming too and trying that and starting with the dream, recalling my dreams. So hopefully these, these can yeah. uh, work in tandem with each other and make me, make me a better person. Yeah, man, I'm sure they will. I mean, meditation is so powerful. Like there are just so many benefits to it, like really crazy things as well. Like it can, lengthen your telomeres like it can literally strengthen your the caps on the end of your chromosomes and make you live longer and that's just one of and there's so many others as well like stress reduction you're less likely to die from a wide range of diseases and causes it's just it's crazy and it's free right anyone can do it (laughs) it is free yeah the best price yeah yeah cool well this is great stuff i love talking to you and, and kind of getting an intro to all this this was really fun um so let's, can you kind of give us a, tell us about your website and everything where people listening can go and, and dive into this and learn some more from you? Yeah, sure. Well, um, I have a YouTube channel called Lucid Dreaming Experience. Um, I recently changed the name. It's actually uh, hundreds of videos on there where I just ramble on about lucid dreaming and consciousness, reality and all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's probably good place for people to go and start and then obviously i have a website how to lucid.com or one Mm -hmm. word um you can find loads of articles and things uh i have a podcast um i believe it's called lucid dreaming podcast by by how to lucid.com or something um i'm on most social media platforms really uh if you kind of just want to get started i I think if you go to my site how to lucid.com forward slash gift um that should redirect you if, if i've set it up properly to like a free PDF. Um, Sometimes I change it up. Sometimes it's like an email lesson series. Sometimes it's a video. It'll be something free to kind of teach you how to lucid dream uh, in more detail. Yeah. And that was, was was okay. So yeah, for people listening, I'll have links to all this stuff in the description so they can check it out, but YouTube's good. And then um, how to lucid.com slash gift you said should work. Should work. Yeah. If it doesn't just go to the main site and it'll be, It'll be somewhere there. <laughs> it, it'll be on there. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Also, yeah, links will be there for people to check out. And uh, yeah, seriously, this is fun stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It's been really fun.